So on a different part of your career, so mm -hmm. while you were doing all these recordings, you mentioned earlier sometime about 1999 or so, um, you, or before that, you were, uh, you had started a speaker company together, uh, uh, started a company called Eggleston. Um, yeah. And then you got a call from David Wilson. David says, come join us. Is that yeah. yeah. Well, I had left Eggleston. And what happened was that uh, before all of that, I got a call from a very dear friend of mine, a very famous photographer by the name of William Eggleston, who I had befriended in the course of my graduate studies. And he was a fan of my work. And, um, uh, and he's extreme. He's now 80, uh, but uh, still with us, thank God. But anyway, William called me and said that uh, uh, my son makes loudspeakers. Would you do me the honor of having him come down and listen to them? I said, of course I will, you know. Yeah, I mean, good Lord. I mean, how could I deny him that when I, who he knew nothing about, sat through hours of looking at my portfolio and critiquing it and, 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 and paying honor to my work? How am I not going to say that? Of course, send, send Bill, Bill down. And Bill came and he built these cabinet speakers that, that looked like end tables that were exquisitely beautiful. Uh, and it was the first time I'd ever seen speakers that actually made a beautiful sound that you didn't even know they were loudspeakers in the room. They looked like furniture, literally. They, and that's what the whole concept was. And, uh, uh, and so I embraced the product. I started selling it out of my store and we tried to, and I also uh, served as an ambassador, got a couple of dealers, but you know, the market wasn't ready for it. The market really, you know, we're, if somebody did that again today, I suspect that it could be successful. You know, if, if you did it really beautifully and, and really focused on the voicing. And uh, Bill has, has a gift. He has a gift for sound. Um, he also has a gift for photography. And uh, he's currently my editor of my photography now, as he is of his father's photography. Anyway, and we're still very, very, very dear friends 20, 30 years later. Um, but uh, uh, so we, and then I, I left Sound Components, and uh, William was just then getting serious about revamping the company and starting it up in a different format, building a speaker that's more traditional, and, uh, and, he, de and uh, he developed a speaker called the Andra, which um, I became involved with, and uh, I needed a job, I needed an income, and we worked together. I helped them market it. I got the Andra into some very key dealers in the United States got some very good uh, press for it. And this precedes the company that is now known as WEG, you know, Eggleston Works. This is William Eggleston Loudspeakers. Um, then uh, we ran into some financial difficulties, as often happens. Uh, and uh, uh, Bill and I both left the company at the same time because we weren't getting paid. Uh, he brought in some uh, friends of his that were in the finance business and one thing led to another and he was ousted as often happens in, in, in these things, you know? Uh, uh, so that was an unfortunate time. And I then joined up with Mark for an ill-fated adventure, Mark Levinson for an ill-fated adventure with a company called Cello. Um, and that did last very long as, uh, uh, then I get a call from Dave Wilson. This is 98. 99 and uh, Dave said I want you to come up I want you to hear something and as it happened he had a, a then brand new pair of Watt Puppy 6s and he happened to have a pair of Andrews there side by side <laughs> and he invited me to set up he invited me to set up the Andrews do the best that I could and then he set up the Watt Puppy 6s and we did a comparison and uh Bottom line is the Watt Puppy 6s had more bass, had more clarity, had better imaging. You know, they were just simply better. And as the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. And uh, he offered me a job, and that's where I've been ever since. Uh, so you were saying about the Watt Puppy 6 being better? It was. And, and uh, it was a, a magical uh, speaker. And... Uh, it was also, in my view, the start of a renaissance for Dave with the company in terms of the sound. And, uh, um, and things just ever since 
that Watt Puppy 6, which was the first Watt Puppy format speaker that had deep and extended bass, which balanced out the spectrum in a very beautiful and musical way. And that, of course, was followed by the Watt Puppy 7 years later, and then the whole host of things uh, to the present point where we are now with uh, you know, the, the Wham, the XVX, and uh, the Alex, and the Alexia 2s, which you see behind me here, and a variety of other uh, models that we have that are utterly spectacular. 